Yeah, welcome to today's session. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Cassie, um, and we are going to be talking about vertical storytelling with TikTok and to a lesser, well, pretty much the same uh, with Instagram Reels. Um, so a little bit about me, um, whether Ian has sort of already uh, introduced me, I am an independent journalist and audience strategist. Um, and I am the founder and editor in chief of Almost, which is um, an Instagram first uh, media outlet focused on world news stories for young people. Um, I also work, I also create, uh, um, have created a lot of TikTok content in the past year or two. Um, so I helped Amnesty, um, Water Aid, and then my own TikToks um, for Almost, um, and just sort of helping uh, my specialty is sort of thinking about how we can use. Um, different sort of platforms to reach different audiences and creating content native to these platforms um, in a way to sort of reach and grow young audiences on, on these platforms rather than the reverse where we sort of have the website and then you know we have an article and then we think about you know how do we get this article up onto like a social media so a lot of my work has really focused on sort of just working natively and creating content natively on these platforms so uh, yeah, a little bit about Almost. So I like to think of Almost as um, Humans of the World meets Teen Vogue. Um, so the goal is to inform young people and in particular young women about important issues that are going on around the world. And then also to reflect the diverse and young audience that we are trying to serve by highlighting sort of underreported communities and minorities and sharing their experiences and stories with the rest of the world. And so a lot of the examples that you'll see today are um, the sort of some of the stories that I've been covering for almost on TikTok and also on Reels. So first we should start off with a quick introduction to TikTok. Uh, this might be familiar to some of you already, but it's good to just sort of have a sort of, uh, I guess like an overview of how it sort of began. Um, so TikTok was initially launched in 2016 by uh, ByteDance, which is a Chinese company, and it became really popular first with Gen Z in China. It was it's called uh, Douyin, which is a separate version of the app. Um, and you may remember back in 2016, 2017, there were a few memes that were really, really popular. Um, some of them I reported on, including um, the Four Generations Challenge, where basically you would see four generations of the family calling each other and then coming out. And then there was like the dramatic transformation one where people would throw like they be in like their pajamas, throw a towel over them and look completely made up and beautiful. Um, and so it basically was sort of really popular among Gen Z in China before it became really viral worldwide when ByteDance acquired another video sharing platform, Musical.ly, which some of you may be familiar with for lip syncing. Um, so it started from viral dances and challenges and lip sync videos. Um, and But now it's more than just that, it's now a space for all types of content, including news. So TikTok, a lot of people sort of think it has to do with sort of, um, you know, you have to do a challenge, you have to dance, um, but actually, no, you don't really have to. This is, I mean, obviously dance and music are really big factors on TikTok. Um, however, recently it's sort of growing in popularity the same way that Instagram has sort of shifted from this place where, you know, you used to sort of curate your beautiful perfect lifestyle where you know you show the best photos of your brunch and your dog but now it's really become a place for information for, on Instagram for example where young people are turning to find information about the world to read about the news um, to find resources to help them to under better understand the world and we are starting to see that more and more on TikTok as well so this is a super exciting time to sort of be getting on TikTok um, to sort of uh, to share stories and to share the news with young people. So oh, some key stats about TikTok. Um, so TikTok currently, um, I think previously at the end of last year was reporting that they had 1 billion monthly active users. 60% um, are women and 40% are men. Um, and it is mostly Gen Z, which we will talk about in the next slide. Um, but most people are spending an average time of 52 minutes um, a day on the app. And 90% of these people, of this, these people are um, accessing on a daily basis. Um, and as you can see, sort of uh, with, an, with an average session of 10.85 minutes. So every time they open it, they spend at least 10 minutes on it, um, which makes it one of the most popular and most engaging social media apps. And then on the photo on the right here, this is from a leaked pitch deck from I think December of last year. So just last month. Um, it's and TikTok is reporting that. Um, people are opening, are using it for 89 minutes a day and opening it 19 times each day. 
and 80% of the people are saying that it is the most entertaining platform. So a lot of people are just sort of, you know, in between sort of like, like my boyfriend, for example, when I walk away and we're watching a movie and we pause it, he's got TikTok out and just is scrolling on it until, you know, we're coming back and starting to watch um, the next, uh, we're starting to watch the movie again. So a lot of people are spending a lot of time on this app and they're super engaged. Um, and so, as you can see here from the pitch deck that they've got, as you can see, most of it is Gen Z. Um, so we've got, you know, a large audience between 18 and 24, as well as quite a large one between 13 and 17 year olds. Um, and so, as you can see, this is a really great place to be reaching younger and sort of wider audiences. Um, because audiences, young young people are not sort of, um, you know, going on their laptops and, you know, typing out, you know, www.bbc.com to read the news on BBC or turning on the TV because, you know, they they don't have a TV and they're spending their times on their phones and chatting to step, chatting their friends and watching videos on TikTok. And so this is a really great chance for us to be sort of delivering the news to the people wherever they are. Um, and as you can see, the community is unique and unduplicated according to TikTok. And so there are a lot of audiences on TikTok that are not on other platforms because a lot of young people don't really use Facebook. Um, they, some people don't even use, if some young people don't even use Instagram. Um, and so this is a really great opportunity to sort of tap into this audience because their habits are changing and they're spending all of their time on these social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat which are all sort of focused on sort of vertical storytelling in general. So let's quickly go through a tour of the, in the TikTok interface uh, for those of you who are not as familiar, um, just because it's really sort of, it sort of shows how you, how the app works and how to sort of think about content. So the first, when you open the app, you will see a For You page. And this is a page that is algorithmically curated based on the videos you interact with, the accounts and hashtags that you follow, your location, your language preferences, and the types of content that you create. And so most of the time users are spending are on the For You page. And then up on the left, um, you have a different tab, which is following, which is actually shows all of the latest videos from the account that you've actively followed. And so the biggest difference between sort of TikTok and Instagram is that when you open Instagram, you have your home feed, which is showing all of the account, the content from the accounts that you've actively followed. And then you change to another tab where you then can see content that you have not from people who created content that you don't necessarily follow. Whereas on TikTok, um, a lot of times people are, you know, it's more likely that people are going to see content from people that they don't necessarily follow because they're spending all of their time on For You, which is helping people to sort of discover this content because TikTok's goal is to make sure that it shows people the content that they want to see versus like creators. And so it more, it values sort of like individual videos more than it values like a profile with a large following, for example. So as you can see from a, a press release uh, from TikTok, it's, uh, this is sort of the ideology behind the For You page, which is about bringing the diversity of videos into your For You feed, gives you additional opportunities to stumble upon new content categories, discover new creators, and experience new perspectives. And so this is really exciting because if you think about it, this means that you know people are more likely to encounter different types of content that they may not necessarily actively follow, but could be totally interested in because a lot of times, young people are not as, or just people in general don't necessarily go and follow like, you know, a news account because they're, they, they want to just spend their time on social media and being entertained. But, you know, this is a really good, the, the way that the TikTok algorithm is sort of set up is really helping sort of people to be able to share these stories and to sort of bring their messages across to the rest of the world in a way that will allow them, that will easily do that, you know, even if this isn't necessarily a topic that people actively follow, you do have the opportunity to be able to have your videos seen by people all around the world. So as we continue on the TikTok interface, on the bottom, we have the Discover tab, which is very similar to the Instagram um, Explore tab. And so the Discover tab is curated using TikTok's algorithm. So on, on this page, if you're scrolling down, you can see the popular hashtags, sounds, and effects, as well as any sort of trends that TikTok is promoting. Um, so this page is really good for identifying current trends. So as you can see up on the slideshow at the top, this is like some of the hashtags that TikTok is promoting. So for example, during COP26, they had a hashtag that was like climate action. Um, and then during um, 
what was it? I think it was the 16 days of like ending violence against women. They had you know, stop violence against women. Um, and so this is really good for, you know, if you're sort of looking at what's trending and what other people are talking about, what are some hashtags that, you know, TikTok is actively pushing, um, then if it sort of fits into what you are sort of covering, then this is a really good opportunity for you to sort of look into this topic and to be able to create a content content around this sort of trending topic. Um, and you can see when you, by, by clicking into um, each of these hashtags, you can then see, um, you know, the top videos on this hashtag or it could be a filter or it could be a sound that people are using and, you know, doing a challenge around. And then at the bottom, you can join in the hashtag by creating your own video. Um, and I should also note that Discover is run by TikTok's algorithm. So sometimes the stuff that you see on um, Discover may be trending, but other things that you see maybe on your For You page, you may be repeatedly seeing sort of like uh, some people using the same sound or doing the same sort of meme style video, then, um, but it's not on the trending page. This does mean that it is trending, but maybe it's only just sort of started trending and TikTok hasn't picked it up yet. Um, so we use Discover sort of as a guide to sort of an inspiration to sort of get started. But um, in general, it's just uh, to find trending topics. A lot of times you just sort of want to be um, sort of spending a lot of time on the app and just sort of engaging with it and to try and study how, you know, users are sort of um, creating content on the app. Um, cool. Then you have on the right, on the far right, you have your profile. Um, so it's really important that when you're getting started on TikTok to turn on a TikTok Pro account. Um, this just allows you to, it's sort of like the Instagram creator or business accounts. This just allows you to have access to analytics so that you can sort of see where, how your videos are doing and, you know, where your audience is coming from. And these are really valuable insights that will allow you to continue to make new videos that will um, you know, better engage with your audiences and to learn from these videos and the, the data from these videos. Um, so you can then set a profile picture or a video um, or both. It shows uh, basically it can either be a photo of you or a video of you. And then make sure you write a bio about who you are and what you do. Um, then you can also add your Instagram and YouTube accounts so that other people can follow you from your TikTok. Um, and we've actually seen a lot of people sort of go from TikTok um, to, you know, sort of following us on Instagram, for example, because we had an Instagram button. So we did some cross-referencing for almost, and we found that we had some users who were, who came from TikTok first and then ended up on our Instagram account. So it's really important that you just sort of make sure that you optimize your profile to have all of these different things so that, you know, everybody can sort of um, reach. You, you have the most amount of opportunities for people to find you everywhere else and you make it really easy for them. Um, and then you'll probably want to follow some competitors just, you know, for inspiration. Um, it helps you to learn more about your, you know, target audience. And also um, it sort of sends a signal to the algorithm about this kind of, you know, the accounts that you're interested in and the types of accounts that, you know, the type of content that you post. Then we have the inbox on the right here. Um, so this is where you can see all of your notifications, including likes, comments, and follows on all your videos and your live videos. Um, you can actually filter, um, this I just found out, you can actually filter your notifications under the top, uh, the all activities drop down at the top. So if you only want to see likes, you only want to read comments, you only want to look at follows, you can actually filter from the top. And then in the top right hand corner, you can access messages, um, which is basically direct messages, um, where you, know, you can message people uh, and they can send you different TikTok videos. Awesome. So now um, we've done sort of the tour of the interface. Um, let's talk a little bit about the different types of content styles on TikTok and Reels, the, the top content types that are super popular in general. So the first one is, um, as you'll probably notice when you're scrolling along on TikTok, people, faces, and talking. And I spoke a little bit about this in my other video, uh, my other course as well. Um, but basically, pe the people relate to people. And as you'll see on this sort of um, I guess on these platforms, on this vertical storytelling, it's very, uh, having like a face is a really personal um, sort of way to connect with your audiences. And people really like that because it's almost like, you know, you're picking up your phone and you're FaceTiming your friend and your friend is telling you a story. And so here are just sort of some examples of the types of content that do well. So on here we have, um, so you want to be a journalist um, run by Chenny, uh, Chenny, I think that's how you say her name. Sorry if I messed it up and you're watching this, um, but um, she, she 
she basically uh, has runs a TikTok account where she basically helps um, young audience, young journalists, you know, with the media industry. And so she is providing tips for young journalists as to how to um, you know, break into the industry, how to negotiate salaries, how to find story ideas and so on. So I'm just gonna play that video. Here are some easy ways to find stories if you're struggling. Are there any anniversaries happening today? Have a list of evergreen content that will work going out at any time. It'll come in super handy on slow news days. Look at Google Trends and see what people are searching and then write a story that fits in with that. Join a local postcode group and write about what people in the area are chatting about. Charities are a pretty good place to start and they are great for wholesome content. Or you could just join a PR list and they'll do most of the work for you. So you always want to be thinking about how you can sort of include someone talking um, and especially in a way that sort of feels very conversational and sort of authentic, like, you know, it's not super like formal, like a news presenter sort of style. Um, and then here is the video that I made for Almost, which is basically about the news about um, the Ukrainian airline that swapped uh, skirts and heels for pants and sneakers to upgrade their uniform. The Ukrainian airline has swapped women flight attendant skirts and heels for pants and sneakers. After learning about complaints from women employees, Sky Up Airlines decided to reform its dress code to focus on both comfort and style. Women previously had to wear high heels, tight blouses and pencil skirts, and flight attendants said that their feet were damaged from having to stand in heels for 12 hours every day. The uniform now consists of trouser suits by an Ukrainian brand and Nike Air Max 720 sneakers which feature a high air cushion. A spokesperson said that times have changed and they wanted to create a new and more modern image of women flight attendants. So uh, these are the types of videos that top performing videos that you'll see versus sort of stuff that doesn't necessarily more like, you know, slideshows that don't necessarily feature sort of like a host or somebody talking or telling a story. Um, the next one is what I like to call thumb stop things. So it's basically, you know, when you're sort of scrolling along, it's something that really grabs your attention. Um, so, you know, it stops people from scrolling. It's impactful content that just sort of makes you sort of grabs your attention and then brings you to the present from whatever you're doing. So you might just be scrolling mindlessly along, but then you see this video, um, whether it's like, you know, uh, stimulation from, you know, this, this uh, maybe it's a video, maybe it's the sound, maybe it's an effect, but it's something that basically really, really captures your attention. So whenever you're sort of making video TikTok videos, you want to really be maximizing the first few seconds of the video because people are scrolling through TikTok pretty much, my, as I said, mindlessly, and they're sort of consuming content really, really quickly, and people have really short attention spans these days. So if you don't really capture their attention immediately, um, they're going to struggle with, you know, continuing to watch a video for more than 30 seconds or even more than 15 seconds because, you know, there's so much content out there. Why should they wait uh, for 30 seconds to see if you're going to reveal something actually valuable or interesting or entertaining? Um, so it's just really important that you sort of start off with something that grabs their attention. So here are just two examples of that. So um, Max Foster from CNN is uh, pretty big on TikTok in terms of like news reporters and journalists. And as you can see here, this is a very dramatic sort of video that really, really gets your attention um, the way that he's sort of done this. People so desperate to get out of Afghanistan, which has been taken over by the Taliban, they're clinging to the undercarriage of a US Air Force plane leaving the country. So as you can see, sort of from the combination of his voiceover, the, the, the word choice that he uses, um, and then just the contrast with the visuals of, you know, people running and clinging to the side of the plane, it really grabs, it's a really short video, but it really, really sort of just grabs your attention and you realize sort of, wow, this is what's going on in Afghanistan right now. Um, and then here we have um, another video from a travel journalist, a travel editor, um, who basically makes videos sort of around uh, of her travels, which is and recommending the different places that you can check out. And so this is one of the examples um, that sort of really, really just sort of is like audio sensory overload, where you can it's just sort of really, really just like pulls you in when you are watching this video. Best Outdoor Spaces in the UK, Part 6. This castle is one of the most dramatic ruins in England. It was built in the 1200s and is sat atop an Iron Age hill fort that looks out across eight different counties. It was destroyed by Oliver Cromwell's forces during the English Civil War, and on a clear day you can see from the Pennines to the Welsh Mountains. It's called Beeston Castle and is in Cheshire. Follow for more. So as you can see, the way that it sort of opens, it's sort of like the movement of the camera. It feels like you're traveling with her and you're sort of going with her on this journey to, you know, you're immersed in this beautiful place and you're part of this. And it really pulls you in and you want to continue watching because, you know, it's 
it's cool and it's beautiful and I want to see more and you know the camera movements make it feel like you know I, I really want to continue to take part in this versus something that's a little perhaps a little more slower paced in general. Cool, and then this is something that we've sort of spoken about during the um, the previous uh, master class that I was teaching, um, but basically it has to tell a story. So here are just two examples of telling telling a story and not telling a story. Um, so first of all, as you can see here, I'm just gonna show this example um, and then we'll talk about the other example. We're gonna have to take a chance now. Oh, oh, dog, oh! <laughs> Oh, the dog is the ball. Oh, here we go. Now that is... <laughs> it's brilliant. Now there we go. It's dog a, has puppy, stopped play. Uh, oh, there we go. I think we'll retrieve the ball. It may need a clean. Okay, so if you were sort of watching this video, if you were on TikTok and you were just sort of watching, the, you were just scrolling along and then you saw the beginning of this video, you'd probably be like, I'm not really sure what's going on. Seems like it's a cricket match. Nothing much is happening. Um, I'm probably just going to like scroll on to the next thing because I don't know what's going on. There's nothing to tell me what I'm watching and what's going to happen. And so on the right is a version where, you know, we've sort of worked, I've sort of worked in like a narrative and I've told a story and this is, and then sort of let's watch this and then see, and then we can sort of discuss the difference. A dog interrupted a cricket match in Northern Ireland on Saturday. I'm going to have to take a chance now. Oh, oh, dog. Oh, oh, the dog is the ball. Oh, here we go. Now that is... <laughs> it's brilliant. Now there we go. The dog a, a has puppy, stopped play. Uh, oh, there we go. I think we'll retrieve the ball. It may need a clean. And then the International Cricket Council gave him a very special award. So as you can see, we're sort of using uh, a combination of sort of me on screen and then having the text on screen to actually give context so that people can immediately, because as we spoke about, people have really short attention spans and we need to grab their attention immediately, as well as sort of just explain to them, you know, what are they watching and why should they continue watching? Um, so having someone come on and say, you know, a dog interrupted a cricket match on in Northern Ireland on Saturday. Um, and then people are like, oh, okay, I know there's gonna be a dog interrupting a match. Let me like wait and let me watch this. I want because I want to see this dog and then you know adding this thing at the end kind of is like adding the the conclusion to the story so you've got the beginning the middle and the end where you know at the beginning we have you know a dog interrupted the match and then we have the dog running around during the middle and then at the end we've got a nice little conclusion where it was made the player of the month um, and so you want to always be thinking about when you're making TikTok videos how you can tell a story and a lot of times the best way to think about this is to sort of think about how would you tell the story to a friend? Because, you know, uh, we are, I think like, you know, people are all natural storytellers. And if you're able to sort of think about, you know, this person that you would sort of explain the story to, um, then you sort of, your brain just sort of automatically kind of tells it in a way that sort of, it has like a, a narrative where a beginning and a middle and an end. And then you can think about sort of that, using, using that, you can base that as like the main structure of how you would go about writing the script for a TikTok video, for example, um, as well as sort of thinking about the words that you would use in telling a friend. So you may not necessarily um, say it in the way that you would present on TV, for example, it might be very personal, it might be very funny, it might be something with your, like uh, you might, you know, pause um, for dramatic effect or, you know, use like a pun or something like that in general. Um, so always be sort of thinking about um, how you can, you know, tell the story around um, the, the content that you are trying to make for these videos. And then um, it's really important that, you know, you keep your content authentic and original. So authentic and like lo-fi content that doesn't feel super treated or polished does really, really well on TikTok versus on Instagram, which is um, all their reels is now also, you know, more leaning towards authentic and lo-fi content as well. Um, in general, people, you know, on Instagram is very much about sort of having an aesthetic, um, a very polished aesthetic, um, but on TikTok and this type of vertical storytelling, it, it it feels more like it's very natural um, and it feels like sort of in the moment spontaneous sort of style and it doesn't necessarily have to be super well edited 
um, or polished, it can sort of be seen as sort of like, so this is really good for like on the ground stuff or behind the scenes stuff where it feels sort of more raw, but at more personal. And a lot of times when you're scrolling on TikTok, for example, you may come across an ad and it looks super, super well made. And most people just continue scrolling because it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't really sort of fit in um, with the, the vibe of the platform. And so when you make things sort of too, um, too perfect or you spend a lot of time editing them, um, people actually tend to turn off from it because they're like, oh, it's too like well made. I think it's probably an ad. This is probably not like the type of content that I come to TikTok for. Um, and so here's an example of, um, I think she's more, uh, she, I think she works at Netflix, but she um, used to be a journalist. I worked at, at BuzzFeed UK. Um, and so she basically made this video um, about the when Britain didn't have any petrol. Um, and so I think the way that she sort of speaks to her audience is really, really sort of natural to the platform. And um, it's a really great sort of example of on the ground reporting on TikTok. Okay, I've avoided getting petrol for three days. It's now Tuesday morning. It is 6.57 a.m. I left the house at 6.30 a.m. I passed three petrol stations. Two, it was impossible. One was closed. Actually, I'm trying to shit, was two closed? No, 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 yeah. Two were impossible, two were closed. I'm now queuing for one. So it's 6.58 now. Let's see how long it takes for me to get petrol. It's 7.16. Um, I am in the queue for the queue for the petrol station. I just left the queue for the queue for the queue for the petrol station. So, it's 7.24. I can see the petrol station. I'm right in front of it. Um, my, next turn in, my next turn is me turning into the petrol station. There are still loads of cars though, so I feel like it is gonna be an extra 10, 20 minutes, but um, 7.30, I am two cars away from petrol. Ah! My car keeps saying low petrol, low petrol. It's like, no fucking shit, bitch. I know it's low fuel. That's why I'm fucking here. Also, just to make an observation, A, um, it is a miracle. I don't want to speak too soon that I haven't crashed my car because the way people are driving is absolutely mad because everybody is acting as if they're the only ones that are stuck in a fucking hellhole when actually we all are. Uh, the other thing is that uh, for all the chat of no hoarding petrol, all of these people who have waited like me are hoarding petrol uh, because I'm seeing numbers I've never seen before, baby, on a petrol station pump. 70 pounds, 80 pounds, 90 pounds, like... <sighs> Ah, uh, can you see that? My man's getting fucking 84, 80, 84, 83, there we go. Oh, he's going to 84, he's going to 84. Okay, at 7.40, uh, just finished getting petrol. I would say from the time I left my house till the time I got petrol, it's been about an hour and 10 minutes. An hour and 10 minutes? Yeah, cause I, I left my house. It, I'd say it's been about an, an hour and five minutes. Yeah, I honestly don't think it's that bad. Just go when you don't, you're not in a rush. Because the people that were trying to get to work, I really feel sorry for. I, on the other hand, was just going to the gym. And it looks like I can't go anymore, so boop. So this is a bit of a longer video, but as you can see, the way that she sort of delivers the video, the way that it's shot, feels really, really sort of native to the platform. It's sort of the way that you would sort of speak to your friend, um, you know, telling them about the story of you waiting to get petrol. Um, and then on the right here, we have an example of sort of behind or on the ground reporting from Max Foster um, when, you know, bar in Barbados. Um, and so I'm just going to play this. On behalf of a grateful nation, but an even prouder people, we therefore present to you the designee for National Hero of Barbados, Ambassador Robin Brianna Fenty. May you continue to shine like a diamond. So as you can see, that's a really, really short clip. Um, he doesn't even, he's not even standing in front of her and does not even have the best angle. However, this clip did super well for him because, you know, he's tapped into sort of um, the the authentic vibe and behind the scenes vibe of it. Um, you can see Rihanna from the side, but that's okay. Um, he's also, you know, um, used song, her Diamond song as the music behind the scenes. And so um, this is sort of like why TikTok is really, really good for sort of, um, 
sort of authentic styled content that doesn't necessarily have to be um, as produced in general. So you can always think about, you know, if you're on the ground covering an event, which I know has been sort of difficult recently due to the pandemic, but any sort of behind the scenes stuff and actually sort of the pandemic has helped TikTok because a lot of people are filming great selfie style videos and have been forced to be very creative with how they sort of present from home in general. So it's sort of um, is more freeing in that, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time making sure that everything looks perfect and pretty and stuff like that in general. It's just more about, you know, sort of that instantaneous, spontaneous um, sort of raw, authentic vibes that you can sort of give off that like do really well on TikTok. And then you want to be able to see most of the time, a lot of content usually focuses a lot on action and emotion. Um, action is pretty self-explanatory because as we said, people really need to be sort of entertained and we want to be able to stimulate them and sort of on multiple sort of sensory experiences, you know, not just sort of like from their eyes, but also from their ears. So you want it, you want them to be able to sort of really engage on like a, a lot of levels with content and action really, really does that. So you always want to be able to open with like the money shot. Um, and so on the left here is a video I made for Water Aid. Um, and basically it um, is a very like minor example of action, um, but it's opening with something that's, there's opening with movement versus something that is still, and then sort of keeping the audience's attention that way. Did you know that this is how much water you use while you wait for your shower to heat up? Right now, I'm in Taizong, central Taiwan. We're currently undergoing our worst drought in 56 years, and the government has turned off water for everybody for two days a week. As a result, we're having to save water however and whenever we can. One of the ways that I do that is by saving the water before I shower and pouring it into a bathtub to be used for later. That water can be used to water plants, for cleaning, and to flush the toilet. I've managed to save almost 15 liters each time. Climate change is affecting people's access to water everywhere, and we need to preserve and protect the world's water. So as you can see, as soon as the video opens, we've got sort of the shower tap, the shower head being turned on, um, and then water going into the bucket. And then you're sort of like, oh, I wonder how long it's going to take. I'm going to I'm going to look and see and, you know, you can continue to hear the water and you can continue to see movement. And so you, you want to be able to sort of grab people's attention with that. But obviously, like if you're creating other things, you know, you want to be able to have movement as soon as possible um, instead of keeping, you know, your best shot for the end, because people are not going to see that. Most people don't even complete your videos. So you want to make sure you just sort of give them the best stuff immediately, hook them. And then once you have them for like, once they're watching your video, then they're more likely to continue watching your video and to complete your video. And then the next thing you want to be able to do is like a lot of the top sort of performing videos focus a lot on emotion because, you know, people relate to people and emotions are sort of um, a way that are emotions are universal and, you know, being able to sort of uh, sort of evoke emotion in people really helps to sort of them to relate and to connect with the story um, the same way that, you know, it's difficult to sort of think about, you know, under or understand a story that doesn't necessarily affect you directly because, you know, it's hot happening halfway around the world. Like, you know, this volcanic eruption in Tonga, um, well, it's, I live so far away, it doesn't really matter to me. But if you're able to show someone who's been affected by this volcano, uh, eruption, for example, then, you know, that's when it clicks and people go, oh, wow, okay, maybe this is a real person has been affected by this. This person reminds me of my uncle. This person could be my friend. Um, and that's when it, they're able to sort of help them to understand the gravity of like a situation or a concept that is really complicated or sort of vague for them to understand. And so being able to sort of tap into the human aspect and the emotional aspect of it is a really good way to for people to sort of engage with your content and to continue to sort of like connect with it and to have an emotional connection that they want to do something with your with after watching this video for example they want to like it they want to comment maybe they want to share and so here is an example of a video where you know we're sort of tapping into the emotion of people and this did i think this did around 300,000 views on my tiktok account um but as you can sort of see from this example how i am sort of delivering it and then we're sort of um just watch it for sort of how it the emotion it sort of evokes and then um the comments you'll sort of I, and we can talk a little bit about the comments that um then came this woman in poland died after she was denied an abortion and people are protesting 30 year old isabella had been 22 weeks pregnant when she was taken to the hospital however doctors did not perform an abortion even though her fetus lacked amniotic fluid which can cause abnormalities in the womb a medical staff had instead told her that she would only be treated after the fetus died Isabella died of septic shock on September 22nd. Last year, Poland outlawed abortion for fetal abnormalities, banning abortion for almost all cases. 
And activists say Isabella is the first person to die as a result of the new law. And so as you can see from this video, right from the beginning, it sort of hits the viewer with like a really devastating fact that a woman died because she was denied an abortion. And that actually, the video, the entire video triggered a lot of comments. There were a lot of people who were very sad about this. Um, there was obviously a debate about pro-life and pro-choice. However, it's really important to always just always think about, you know, the people who are behind these stories um, and how can you sort of find someone who's, you know, been affected or is, you know, a part of the story and then showing someone um, showing this person and you know showing these people so that people so that viewers will be able to better engage with it rather than like stock image footage of like you know you know I don't know uh stuff in you know fetuses for example um that may not necessarily be as you know uh engaging or people will not necessarily connect with it the same way that they would when you know they're seeing people protesting and people really upset um that really really sort of helps people to sort of understand the issue on a more personal level and then one of the things that does really well on TikTok is audience engagement. So TikTok is actually really, really TikTok and now Instagram, which also has very similar features, is very, very good at, um, you know, audience for audience engagement because it has a lot of different sort of stickers and functionalities that allow you to engage with your audience directly. Um, so this includes, you know, if somebody comments on your video, um, you can then respond to the comment with another video, and then it shows up like on these two examples right here. Um, and then you can also um, duet um, somebody else's video. So if somebody makes a video, you can then respond to that video by having your video next to their video, and then it becomes sort of like two videos next to each other. So you might be dancing along with this other person um, as they're dancing or you might be um, you know reacting to their circumstances so maybe you can duet the person getting fuel and you can sort of react to it or with your own version of you getting fuel or you um, heat up your water uh, you try to heat up your shower and then you duet my shower video for example um, so one of the good examples of this that I saw recently was um, for Spider-Man the new movie um, there was uh, the Daily Bugle, they had like a Daily Bugle TikTok as part of the Spider-Man um, uh, marketing strategy. And one of it is just like, can you read, are you a news reporter? If you're as good a news anchor, then you'll be able to read this, tele duet this, and then, you know, read the teleprompter as your duet. So then you sort of then can create your own video trying to read the text that is coming up on the other TikTok video as if you were a news anchor. Um, so these are just sort of ideas that you can use for sort of um, how you can create different types of content that really directly engages with your audience. Um, so on the left here is an example of that where um, basically, uh, this is a video I've made for WaterAid. Um, we are basically doing, a, well, we made a video about sort of how how girls um, are missing out on school because there are no decent toilets in a lot of schools in Nepal. Um, so some people still didn't really understand the issue and they wanted to understand more. So this was one of the questions that somebody asked and they said, question, how does uh, gender equality and access to water relate? And so we then decided to make an entire video just to address this question to sort of help people to understand this issue better. Dirty water impacts everyone, but girls miss out the most. That's because girls and women are typically the ones responsible for domestic work and collecting water. In fact, today girls and women will spend over 200 million hours walking to collect water. Not having access to a toilet can also be especially difficult for people who have periods. In Nepal, one in three girls drop out of school often because of lack of decent toilets and clean water at school. Girls and women are also often excluded from decision making around water and toilets because of traditional gender roles and power structures. As a result, improvements don't address girls' perspectives and challenges, and they continue to be denied their rights. Without clean water, another generation of girls will be left behind. And then on the right here, we have the travel journalist who had a comment from one of her fans who said, I'm in a wheelchair and would love to visit some of the places in your videos. Can you please mention if it's accessible? And so she responded in a video. Hi, Christine, no bother. Um, I thought what would be easiest is if I made this video and I'll put a title on it that says accessibility and I will put in the comments all of the accessibility information for everywhere that I've posted about before. And anytime I make a new video, I will come back here and I will leave that information in the comments too. So it can be like a library of accessibility information. Um, I, I hope that's helpful. Um, but you know, anytime you wanna know anything about a specific place, um, absolutely just drop me a comment as well. and I will get back to you ASAP, I promise. <laughs> 
So as you can see, this is TikTok with the sort of audience engagement features really allows you to really actually directly address the concerns and questions that your audience has in a really personal way. Um, you know, for example, you know, when your audience asks for accessibility information, you can then make a video and tell them about this. If they have a question about a specific concept, you can then, you know, react to that and you can do more than just sort of write a comment. You can engage with them on a more sort of, again, more personal level and you can sort of have a conversation with them and create more content that then, you know, helps to strengthen the relationship between you and your audience. And then we have a clear call to action. So a lot of the really high performing TikToks have a clear call to action because at the end, maybe they'll say, you know, uh, follow this account for world world news, um, sign this petition, um, people just being able to sort of direct people to do something because you want people to, you know, engage with your content as much as possible, whether it's like sharing it or, you know, you can basically, you can use TikTok as a way to sort of get people to really engage with you. And with, as we just spoke about with the audience engagement features, um, this really allows for a really, really like a, a really high sort of rate of interaction. And so people, it's just sort of a, ch a, case, a chance and a case for you to just sort of point them in the right direction. Um, and so a lot of the TikToks um, that have done really well have a clear call to action. And so here we have um, Sophia Smith Galler from now she's at Vice World News, I believe. Um, and so here is a video of her actually doing audience engagement by answering um, a question, a comment, and then uh, also leaving with a clear call to action. So let's watch this video. What are countries that have completely different names for themselves to what we call them in English? Part two. Japan in Japanese is Nippon. This means sun or day, and this means origin. And the name comes from when the Chinese called Japan this because the sun rose in the east and Japan is to the east of China and they were like, oh, this is the place where the sun rises. The Japanese have more than one way of pronouncing this kanji, so sometimes it's Nihon. And if I have a Japanese creator who can explain how it can be pronounced in two different ways, I think it's really cool, so please do tell us. When Marco Polo came back to Europe and told everyone about China and Japan, he called Japan Zipang, so that's likely how we eventually got Japan. Albania is interesting. In Albanian, it's called Chiperia, and some people think the etymology is that that means land of the eagles, an important symbol in Albanian folklore. But other etymologists argue it's from Shipoi, which means to speak clearly. For us, Albania is the medieval Latin name for the country, possibly from the Illyrian tribe of the Albani. If you want part three, let me know. So as you can see in there, she's actually got two calls to action in there where she's asking a Japanese creator to sort of explain uh, the two different pronunciations, but then with a clear part three, uh, a, a clear call to action at the end saying, if you want part three, let me know. And yes, there were so many comments asking for part three, she did end up doing a part three. Um, so this is all really good ways to sort of interact with your fans. Um, and then on the right here, uh, here is a TikTok that we made for Amnesty. Um, where we are talking about the three women who were uh, facing prison for um, a rainbow poster and then with a clear call to action at the end. Three women in Poland are facing up to two years in prison, all because of this poster. They're being tried for offending religious beliefs and the verdict is happening on the 2nd of March. <laughs> No one should end up in prison because of a poster. Stand with the women by signing the petition. So as you can see, um, we've sort of done the reporting at the beginning, sort of told the story, we've heard from the women. And then at the end, we said, sort of got a, a statement saying, you know, no one should have to go to prison because of a poster. Here's how you can take action. Um, so you can use this for, you know, if you want people to subscribe to your newsletter, if you want people to comment, if you want people to duet something. Um, it's all about sort of getting your audience to sort of engage with you on as many levels as possible. Awesome. And now we are moving on to the TikTok algorithm, which I'm sure a lot of people have questions about and how it works. Um, so the first thing about the, t well, let's talk about sort of the, the key ranking signals of the TikTok algorithm. Um, so the first thing is video views, which is pretty much the same for almost every sort of video platform. Um, the, the more video views that, the more views that your video is getting, the more likely it's going to get, TikTok is going to say, oh, the people are liking this video. I'm going to push it to more people and see if they will continue watching this. And then that's sort of how you go viral. Um, and so video views is essentially um, how many views your video has. Um, so in order to get a lot of video views, the goal is to get on the For You page. So as you can see from the analytics screenshot here, um, this is a video that got 300 
it plus 300k plus views and most of them as you can see 95 percent of that came from the for you page and then only two percent of that came from people who actually followed the account and so TikTok actually measures uh, individual measures by individual video and less and less about the profile. So, you know, it's not about like, you know, if you have 1 million followers, you're more likely to go viral. Um, it's more about, you know, if you make a good video, then you're more likely to go viral. And so it's less about, it's, it's more about, you know, high quality content. So you want to focus on um, creating high quality content that people will want to watch. Um, and so a lot of the things that we just spoke about earlier, like, you know, making sure that you're hooking them in in the first few seconds, opening with a money shot, focusing on action and motion, and all those sorts of things will help you to sort of just increase your video views in general, because you, as the more that someone, the longer someone watches your video, the that's like an extra view for you. Um, and so the other thing that also then ties into the next point, which is audience retention, which is basically how long people watch your video for. Um, so as you can see in this video here, um, it is a 24 second video. Um, and then the average watch time was 19.2 seconds, which is pretty good because that is more than 50% um, and it's quite high. And so you want to aim for a high completion rate. You basically want people to watch as your video for as long as possible. You want people to finish your video and then you want people to watch your video again on loop. Um, so basically the more that people do that, the more TikTok realizes, oh, this is a really engaging video. People are watching it for a really long time. And so it means that they really like it or they're looping it and they love it so much Then I'm going to push it to other, um, to more people so that they can also see this. Um, so again, as we sort of spoke about, we want to focus on, you know, telling a story and so making sure that we're aiming for, you know, a high completion rate. And a lot of the ways that you can sort of hack that is by doing sort of uh, shorter videos, because then people don't, if you make like a three minute video, you're probably, it's not likely that people are going to watch the entire three minutes and they may only watch 30 seconds of your video, which is not great if you have a three minute video, but if you have like, I don't know, a 45 second video and people watch 30 seconds of your video, that's a pretty good completion rate. Um, so you just want to think about how you can sort of keep your audiences watching for as long as possible. And then the next thing you want to think about on the left is sort of interactions and actions after viewing. Um, and that's sort of why we sort of spoke about like clear call to action, because um, the more engagements and views that a TikTok video receives, the more likely it will be served to larger audiences. And so, you know, if somebody is watching, as you can see there from the TikTok interface, there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot of different things with um, while you're watching this video. So like you can either click on my profile and go and my profile and then follow me maybe you watch this video and you really like this video and you want to find out more um, you might go to my profile and then you might look at some stuff and then you like it and then you follow me so tiktok is going to um, sort of like register that and be like oh okay someone you know took multiple steps after completing this video or you know someone might like it or they may comment or they may read the comments um so you know this is why you know the clear calls to action really come in handy so you might be like oh tap the profile and follow for more world news or you know what do you think about this? Leave a leave your thoughts in the comments. You know, um, share this with somebody. Um, sign the petition. Click the link in bio. This is why people really do a lot of these things, and they help to sort of send a signal to the algorithm that you know people really like this content. They they're not just sort of passively consuming it, but are actively taking some sort of action after they have consumed this content because they want to be able to do more than just sort of watch this video. And then the next one is video integrity, which seems pretty like basic, but actually it's really important because you want to basically, TikTok will restrict your content based on sort of copyright violations, violence or R-rated activities and so on. Um, and you want to avoid reasons for TikTok to restrict your reach because on the right here, this is what happens when TikTok restricts your video. So this is actually one of the videos that we made for the almost account in Chinese. And it's basically about how scientists have potty trained cows to pee in specific areas so that they can reduce greenhouse gases, um, greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. However, uh, I think as a result of, um, I'm not really sure why TikTok restricted this, but it, there's a cow peeing and I, it's gotten restricted for sensitive content. So when people are scrolling along, um, they basically will see this filter and they, it's very, very blurry. And so as a result, you kind of can't see anything behind the video. And most of the time, people are probably not going to be very like open to clicking on watch anyway, because they have no idea what this video is going to show them. It could be violence. It could be something that may be, you know, triggering. And so a lot of people usually just sort of skip video or they just continue scrolling. Um, so you want to try and think about how you can sort of avoid 
uh, sort of getting these dings by TikTok because sometimes, you know, your content will be taken down or your account will be banned. Um, just sort of avoiding, you know, as much as possible. And obviously it can be difficult um, when you're reporting on news. We also got blocked one of our accounts one of our videos also we also couldn't post one of our videos because it was about sort of an explainer on the taliban and what had happened in afghanistan but tiktok registered it as sort of promoting violence and so um it's quite difficult because you have to really sort of sometimes it's just the algorithm but you sort of have to just sort of think about that when you're um creating your videos so that you can avoid this as much as possible so um, now that we've sort of spoken about the elements of sort of how that sort of feed into the algorithm, now let's talk a little bit about the For You page. So the For You page for every individual is based on the user interactions. So this means like, you know, the videos that you like or share, um, the accounts that you follow, uh, the comments that you post, uh, the, con the, the types of content that you create. So for example, if I create a lot of content about climate change, then I'm probably more likely to see some, um, you know, videos about climate change uh, versus like, you know, if I create a lot of content about gardening, then maybe I'm going to see a lot of like gardening TikToks. Um, and then it also factors into account things that you've marked as like, you don't want to see. So for example, videos you've marked as not interested or videos that you've uh, reported as inappropriate. And so basically these are the factors that the user, that it factors into the user's activities. And then it also factors in video information, which is basically um, the subject matter. So uh, that is like, you know, depending on what the video is about. So for example, uh, this video is about gardening, um, then it will register, it'll figure out, TikTok will do its best to figure out sort of what is this video about based on, you know, your video, your caption, your hashtags. Um, and then it'll say, oh, okay, this video is about gardening. So I'm going to show this to users who had previously engaged with content also about gardening. Um, and then so that is, like I said, sort of drawn from the captions So the caption and the hashtags also sort of indicate to TikTok what type of content this video is about. So it's really important that when you're writing your captions and doing your hashtags, and we'll speak about that a little bit later, that um, you know, you're making sure that it accurately reflects your content, because all of these things are key to sort of uh, feeding the TikTok algorithm and letting it know sort of, you know, this is what the video is about and this is who the target audience is. Um, so TikTok is basically the goal. TikTok's goal is to show people the things that they want to see and that they think users would be interested in. And then the other thing is trending sounds. So sometimes sounds that are trending generally have more sort of TikTok tends to favor sounds that a lot of people are using at one time. So if you jump in on a trend that is a, a sound that people are using, then it is more likely that your video will get pushed onto the For You page um, versus something that may not be a sound that somebody, a lot of people are using at the time. Then um, we have the last one, which is uh, more lower weight. It's less about sort of, it's less important than like the user interactions and video information. It's more about device and account settings. So this depends on, this is more like for the user. So if I'm a user, it, it will look at my language preference. So, you know, if I wanna watch content in English or Chinese, um, and then, you know, it will look at my country settings. So where I'm, I've set as my country, it'll look at where I'm posting from. And then it will also look at my device type. Most of this is just for, um, Sort of for local content. So for example, it's going to know like, oh, um, she's posting, Cassie's posting from Taiwan. So she probably wants to, and um, she's potentially engaging with some content from Taiwan and her language preference also has Chinese. So she's probably interested in seeing some content from Taiwan in Chinese. And that's probably why my For You page will have some stuff that will be um, in Chinese from Taiwan, Taiwanese creators. Um, but these are sort of um, more one, they're, they don't factor as much into the For You page as sort of use your interactions and the information um, from the video, because um, this is a one-time setting that you set up when you set up your account versus like user interactions, which is like an active and a constant thing where you're constantly engaging versus like, you know, I, I made this setting and now I don't ever think about it ever again. Great. So now that we've sort of gone through, you know, the interface, we've gone through, um, you know, the top types of content, and we've spoken a little bit about, um, you know, the, the TikTok algorithm and what makes it tick. Uh, and then we, so now we want to sort of move on to sort of the, the I guess, the practical aspect of it where, you know, we're going to create our uh, video. So the first thing you want to do when you're sort of thinking about going on TikTok, um, especially as a journalist or a news media organization, um, is to define your strategy. So defining your strategy is super important because you need to first identify your audience because 
when it comes to TikTok, having a strong creative concept and mission is more important than the production quality. Um, the TikTok, TikTok video language is unrefined, it's imperfect and authentic. So you guys speak their language. So it's really important that you, you know, you figure out, you know, okay, who is my target audience? How am I going to, um, what are they interested in? And then making sure that you are creating content that really, really serves their goals because, you know, versus like sort of having like, you know, high quality content that you don't know who it is, it is for. But if you're able to sort of identify that target audience and really sort of hone in on that and then sort of create the video in a way that will tell TikTok, you know, this is a video for gardening lovers and, you know, then TikTok and with your gardening hashtags, your captions, the way that you, the things that you do in your video, your content, then TikTok will say, oh, okay, this account is for gardening people. So let me put it in gardening talk or something like that. And then you'll be able to sort of uh, make sure that you're creating, that you're reaching your audiences. So you also want to think about, you know, um, what kind of, uh, how do they sort of speak? Um, is there specific things that they like? Is there specific hashtags that they use? Is there a specific look of their videos? And a lot of this is just sort of spending time on the platform and thinking about your audience and sort of identifying, you know, like these members of your audience, how do they sort of uh, use the app? How do they create content on the app? And then sort of looking at the ways that they do that in terms of like their formats, the way they speak, the styles, their captions, the hashtags, and then sort of thinking about, okay, how can I take all of these formats and styles that they are using and then applying that to my reporting and my journalism so that it, spe it, it matches the language that they speak so that when these when my video is shown to my target audience, it feels natural to them. It's not like, oh, this is such a weird, jarring, perfectly polished video that I don't really want to engage with because, you know, I'm enjoying watching, like laughing about something else. Um, but suddenly I'm watching this like super polished video. It's really formal and it doesn't really, you know, speak to me. So I'm probably going to just like move on. So it's really important that you sort of make sure that you figure out who your audience is and who you are serving. So then as a result of that, you want to be audience first. So every piece of content should serve your mission and your audience. So then you say, every time you see a story, you'll think, okay, does every, every post that you want to post on TikTok, you have to say, okay, is this in line with my mission? Is this something that my audience wants to know or needs to know? And so for example, from my TikTok, as we spoke about for almost the goal is to inform young people about important things that are going on around the world and so every piece of content i'm going to look at it and i'm going to say is this something that falls under this mission and so you know i'm going to cover yeah a badass woman you shouldn't know about in 2021 because you know it's for young women um you know and we're talking about you know human rights such as you know chile legalizing same-sex marriage for example so if a story really fits the mission, then you should cover it regardless of how hard it might be to create it. So a lot of times you might, you know, see some a story somewhere and then you'll think, oh, this is really perfect for, um, you know, the, the mission of almost, for example. However, there's like absolutely no videos, there's no photos, um, there's like one report about this. Um, I guess it's going to be really difficult to make a TikTok video around it. Um, but that doesn't mean that you should just sort of pass on it. It just means that you need to, you know, do more work, do more reporting and figure out how you can tell it. Um, because having that sort of, just sort of thinking audience first and being like, this is what my audience needs to know versus, you know, oh, is it easy for me to make or not? Will really help you to, you know, be able to really hone in on that target audience and just continue to create sort of high quality videos that will, that your audience, your target audience will engage with and then really help you to sort of grow that following on TikTok. So now that we sort of defined our mission, the next thing is like finding stories and trending topics. Um, so how do you go about finding stories now that you've sort of uh, defined your mission? Uh, so the first thing is to, I can't actually see my screen. <laughs> oh, picking and curating stories. Sorry, something stuck on my screen. So I couldn't see it. Um, so stories can actually come from anywhere. Um, so this includes sort of, you can look at news and media outlets. Um, you can look at blogs and websites. You can look at other social media platforms. You can, you know, hear from word of mouth conversations. Maybe your mom is telling you about a story or maybe, you know, your friend is telling you about something that they read on the news and it seems interesting and seems to fit under your mission or it seems like something that your target audience would be interested in. Um, one of the, the really good ways, proven ways to sort of think about it is to keep an eye out for stories that are going viral elsewhere that sort of make sure that they obviously fit in line with your mission. Maybe it's going viral on, I don't know, on Facebook or maybe it's going viral on Twitter or maybe there's a lot of people telling you about this, um, you know, in real life or messaging you or sending you the same link. This is a sign that there is public interest. And so um, this is an example of how basically uh, I took 
uh, a story that was going viral on the almost account. So I realized, wow, this is a this is done really really well for us. Uh, it has more than eight thousand likes, um, and you know this is a lot more than usual. And I was like, oh, it seems like you know our audience is um, really really interested in this story. So I basically made this Instagram post first, and then I was like, oh wow, lots of people are seem to really like this. Let me see what happens if I flip this into a TikTok. So I turned it into a TikTok. Um, and then I posted it as a reel on Instagram. And then this video got 1.8 million views on Instagram, on reels. So as you can see, there's sort of, if you're able to, if there's already demonstrated interest elsewhere, um, it is very likely that, you know, if you make that into a TikTok or a reel, it's likely to do really well as well. Um, and one of the rules that, um, that I, I sort of learned was that, or someone told me was to think of it as like the three times rule. So if you see a story three times, then it's probably a sign that you should probably cover it. So it's like, oh, you know, maybe you've read it on, I don't know, you've, you've, you've got a push notification from something and then you saw somebody else tweeted it on Twitter. And then, you know, two days later, your mom told you about it. Then, you know, you've seen this story three times. And so it's probably a sign that a lot of people are interested in this. So you should probably cover it. Um, there's probably public interest in this. And then the other way is to sort of use trending topics to pivot to your mission and to serve your audience. And so this is sort of when you can lean into TikTok sort of explore page and just sort of looking at what other people are talking about, you know, on the platform. So, or just like in real life. Um, and so when everyone was talking about Peng Shui, for example, um, and it was all over the place and, you know, it was on all of the other social media platforms and everyone was posting about it. And then I was like, okay, I think this will be a really good opportunity for me to make a video about this because it seems like it's a trending topic, even though it may not necessarily be a trending topic on TikTok yet, um, this is what was the result and it gained a lot of comments. This Chinese tennis star said she was sexually assaulted by a former vice premier of China. 35-year-old Peng Shui said in a Weibo post that she and Zhang Gaoli, 75, began an on-and-off extramarital relationship seven years ago. However, she said that he stopped contacting her when he began to rise in the ranks of the Communist Party. It was after Zhang retired about three years ago that he invited her over to his house to play tennis with him and his wife before he sexually assaulted her, she said. Peng's post was gone from Weibo in under 30 minutes. Searches for her name and even the word tennis appeared to be blocked. Her account is still visible but has been blocked from searches and comments have been disabled. This is the first time that a Me Too case has involved a Chinese Communist Party member. Zhang has not commented on the allegations and the Chinese government did not respond to requests for comment from multiple media outlets. The Women's Tennis Association has called for a fair and transparent investigation but said it had been unable to get in touch with Peng. So this is an example of sort of public interest around a world news event and then just sort of, or any news event and then just sort of making a TikTok around it. And then on the right here is more of an example that sort of taps into, um, so during Halloween, basically TikTok was promoting a bunch of Halloween hashtags um, and, you know, uh, events and sort of duets and then all of the trending, all of the trending tags, uh, all of the trending um, hashtags and stuff were related to Halloween. And so I was looking on the Discover page and I was like, oh, okay, maybe we should do some Halloween content. Content. Um, and so I pulled out this story from last year, which um, I, I think actually it was now, yeah, last year, uh, no, 2020. Um, and then I was like, oh, I haven't really shared this on TikTok before. So let me make a video about uh, normal people, people dressing up as normal people in everyday situations in Taiwan for Halloween. And then it ended up doing almost half a million views because I was tapping into this trending conversation that was going on around TikTok of just people talking about Halloween. And you can do, this is like a very basic example um, where, you know, sometimes people are talking about like yesterday mental health matters was trending. So you might want to make a video around mental health, for example, because this might be something or a story about mental health um, if you're covering news, for example, or so you can really sort of just like look at, you know, these public, these trending topics and think about how they fit in your mission and how you can sort of create content that, and you must ensure that it sort of remains authentic and natural and doesn't feel weird for you to be like, sort of like jumping on a bandwagon for like a trend that you don't necessarily have to, like you, you're, you're like, people don't want to be like, why am I watching, you know, a journalist doing this weird dance challenge that has nothing to do with her job, for example. Um, so here is that Halloween video. Taiwanese people dressed up as normal people in everyday situations for Halloween, and it's iconic.
so this this also reminds me to say that you know it's not just about sort of trending topics it's also about sort of all of the other things including hashtags music um filters and effects which are all sort of things that trend on the platforms and so um this song from that is behind there's this tiktok that was actually trending at the time it's a it's actually a stock music um stock music from tiktok um but it had a lot of people using it during halloween time so i decided to use this song as well which obviously helped it to sort of get pushed um and promoted into the for you page which then helped to sort of lead it to um the to uh, like half a million views and you know this also included the help of you know hashtags and jumping on all of the hashtags like Halloween 2022, uh, sorry, 2021, um, and so on. And then the last way that you can sort of, one of the last, well, there are more than three ways, but this is one of the, the ways that we're going to talk about is to, you know, to find stories, is to listen to your audience, um, especially for these platforms. So TikToks and, tic and Reels are a really great way, as we've sort of spoken about, for interacting directly with your audience and addressing their questions and concerns. So you can always look in the comments um, and see what people are talking about, because this might give you ideas and inspiration for, um, you know, making a new video such as, you know, oh, let's talk, a, let's uh, make a video about how, um, you know, lack of access to water will affect, you know, girls from going to school. Um, you can also ask a question with a Q&A sticker while you're making um, a video. So that then gets people to respond and then maybe you want to re react to their responses. Um, or you can create a duet and say, hey, um, you know, guys react to this um, and then see what the types of content that they create. And so on the right here is an example that um, from one of my first few TikTok videos where I made a video about Hungary banning um, LGBT content for children. Um, and then there was a comment which I saw and said, oh, by the way, you used a photo from Poland. Just want to let you know, maybe you wanted to talk about it too. And so I thought, oh, wow, yes. Um, maybe I should also address the situation in Poland and obviously address my mistake. Um, and so I basically responded to her and made this other video about um, Poland, the LGBT situation in Poland. I totally miss this, but you're right. This is a photo from a protest in Poland against LGBT free zones. In recent years, more than 100 towns in Poland have declared themselves to be LGBT free zones or areas that are completely free of LGBT ideology. LGBT rights in Poland is among one of the worst in European Union countries, according to a 2021 report. Poland is deeply Catholic, and the ruling right-wing party and the Catholic clergy have been accused of boosting homophobia. Same-sex relationships are not legally recognized in Poland, and same-sex couples cannot adopt children together. Although some LGBT people have been able to adopt by applying as a single parent, the government proposed a new law in March to close this loophole. On Saturday, June 19th, thousands of people held a massive pride parade through Warsaw to demand an end to discrimination against the LGBT community. The European Union has also shown its support for the LGBT community by declaring the whole of the EU an LGBTIQ freedom zone. So this video ended up outperforming the Hungry video. Um, and I think I posted it maybe half a year ago, but it's still gaining views to this day. And so this is just sort of to show, goes to show that, you know, when you're listening to your audience, it's basically, it's a direct sort of looking at comments is like a direct way to understanding what your audience is thinking and then being able to directly, they really appreciate it when you are able to directly engage with them. And a lot of times people just sort of want to be able to see their stories represented and their experiences shared with the rest of the world. And so if you have the opportunity to do that and it fits in with the mission and what you are doing, so for example, because you know I cover a lot of human rights news, this obviously LGBT free zones makes sense for something um, that I would cover on almost. And so I was like, okay, let me make a video about this, and it is great. So you know, this is a really great opportunity to sort of engage with your audience really, really directly and listen to them, and then hear their feedback, and then take that into account. Um, and they'll really, really appreciate you for it, and they'll be able to, they'll want to follow you and do all of the things that you ask them to, like subscribe to your newsletter, follow you on Instagram, and so on. Awesome. So now we are moving on to creating your first video. Um, so here are just here's just a breakdown of some of the video elements. Well, four things to think about when you're creating your video. So try to keep it to 15 to 30 seconds because this sort of keep the shorter the video is, the more likely, as we spoke about, for people to complete the video, but also it keeps viewers engaged because as we spoke about as well, that you know people have really short attention spans, they're doing a billion things at once, um, and there, there's so much content out there, they don't want to, if something takes too long to get started, then they're probably not going to watch it. So the more that you can make it shorter and more concise, the better. Um, you want to make it bright, so no matter what you do, just make sure that your visuals are super bright, 
um, whether it's like, you know, making sure that you're perfect, you're, you're lit well, or, you know, you, the, the video is not super dark because people don't really engage with content that is really, really dark because it doesn't really grab their attention. Um, then for the music or the sound, you want to try and aim for something that's around 120 plus BPM if possible. I don't actually know how quick that is, but um, basically fast track, fast paced tracks have a higher completion rate because you know it's it's more than just about you know having bright visuals if there's no sound people may not necessarily engage with it uh, because a lot of times actually people do watch tiktoks with the sound on and the sound can play a crucial factor in sort of like getting people sort of to pay attention um and when it's also a fast pack paced track it also helps to move things along versus something that's a little slower so if you have a longer sort of video or you need to do some boring explanation or exposition in between um having sort of like a a driving soundtrack will really helps 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 the the I guess the viewer to think oh no this is still moving I'm still sort of this is not like slowing down this is not super boring basically you want to sort of as we spoke about kind of like simulate the senses in a lot of different ways so that it just sort of makes things feel fast paced and like engaging so that people are not going to get bored and then turn away or scroll to the next video. And then uh, the, radio, uh, the ratio of nine to 16, um, vertical basically, uh, because it takes up more screen space and just because that is the type of videos that are on TikTok because everyone is scrolling like this on their phones and they're not going to you know, turn their phone this way to watch a special video because you know, people are not so invested in like people in like specific types of content that they'll be like, oh my God, I wanna watch this video so much, I'm gonna turn my phone the other way, I'm just gonna continue scrolling because this is not worth me flipping my phone on the side. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you think about these things when you're putting your video, when you're making your first video. So in terms of your setup, um, so you need your phone. Uh, so you, as long as you can set it at around 1080 HD at 30 FPS, that's totally fine. Most phones support this. Um, and you can either film it on your phone camera app or you can use the TikTok or Instagram apps. Um, which film in lower quality, but if you need to use like a special effect or like a filter, um, then you'll probably need to film within these apps. Um, then you'll need earphones or AirPods uh, just because it increases the quality of the audio a lot. And, um, and you'll actually see a lot of most creators on TikTok use headphones or earphones. And some people even hold, hold their AirPods like this as they like talk into the microphone or they have, they hold a microphone. Um, so it's actually okay. You don't. It's part of the look, so you don't need to worry too much about you know, um, you know, looking weird if you're holding your you know your microphone up to you because a lot of people actually do that. Um, and then you want to make sure that you have good lighting. So this includes you know if you have natural light, that's great. Um, natural light looks great on everybody. Just make sure that you have you are facing the light and not the light uh, not have the light against coming up behind you because then you'll be backlit. Um, then or if you don't have that or even if you have that. Um, a lot of people invest in another light source, such as, you know, a ring light, um, which can also hold your phone um, and, you know, really lights up your face because as we spoke about, we want things to be bright. Um, and then, you know, if you want, you can also get a phone holder or a selfie stick. Uh, so selfie sticks are really helpful if you're sort of on the ground running around and you have to hold your phone up for like, I don't know, three hours. It gets really tiring on your arm. So you probably want to use a selfie stick and then it also gives you a better sort of uh, you can also raise that up for like, you know, overhead views and all those sorts of things. And then a phone holder is just because if you're holding, I used to just sort of hold my phone as I film, which works, but it does get tiring. And sometimes, you know, you, your hand starts to shake and then the video starts to shake. So um, you can, if having a sort of stabilizer will just help in general. And then if you are using green screen as a filter, as you've seen in a lot of the videos where I'm standing in front of like a background or a lot of people are standing in front of a background, um, that's a green screen filter that we use in TikTok or Instagram. Um, so ideally for that, you wanna have a clean and ideally green background against you while you're filming um, so that you know the, the phone can sort of pick up who, who, the difference between you and the background and then replace the background with something else. If you can't really find that, that's totally fine. Um, you just need sort of a back, even just like a blank clear background, like a white background like this would be okay, or something that is a high contrast to, um, you know, your face. So like if I had, when I had sort of my blonde hair, it was really difficult to film against the white background because it would sort of, it couldn't, the Instagram and TikTok couldn't figure out where, where uh, the cutoff was between my hair and also the wall. So just sort of finding a, a good, good corner or good wall to do that against, or you can buy paper, um, green paper and stick it on the wall. Um, that's just a trick that I've learned. 
so tips for filming. Um, again, make sure you go somewhere bright and quiet. And then you want to make sure that you've got your phone at eye level. Um, so, or use the phone holder or ring light. You don't want it too high or else people can't see your eyes and eyes are really important for people to engage with you. Um, you don't want it too low or else you have a double chin. Um, and then make sure that you don't zoom in too close. Um, I spoke a little bit about this as well in the previous course, um, but essentially you wanna make sure that it's quite comfortable. There's still space around you um, because first of all, it's easier to zoom in than um, zoom out when, you know, if. If uh, I film like this and then I can zoom in and crop everything around me, but if I film like this, then it's actually impossible for me to zoom out because there's nothing for me to zoom out. Um, and then also because, you know, we're going to be putting a bunch of different things on top of you and around you, such as subtitles and text and stickers. Uh, so just making sure that you leave enough room for that in case you need it. And then if it's echoey um, or you're out and about on a protest or something, um, using headphones or Air AirPods help just like dramatically in general. Um, you can also invest in, you know, like a microphone and you can plug into your phone um, if you really need it. And so here is uh, on the left, just an example is sort of a comfortable sort of shot that you want to aim to have. This is actually an Instagram story that we filmed for the BuzzFeed World Instagram. But as you can see, um, the reporter, she is facing, uh, she's got the natural light, she's facing a window. The natural light is coming in. She's holding her phone like this in front of her. Um, it's a comfortable shot and there's enough room for us to put stuff around her. Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar, and it's an important month for Muslims as we believe that the Quran, our holy book, was revealed in Ramadan. And then on the right here is a video that we shot for Amnesty, um, which is uh, an example of you know being somebody else. If you're filming someone else, um, also making sure that you know you have like a, a comfortable sort of shot around sort of uh, you've got the space around me um, and then also big enough so that you can see my face however the audio on this is awful and this is when we first started doing TikTok and just an example of how and also the lighting's not great so it's almost like an example of how not to film um, we should definitely have used uh, airpods or even earphones for this uh, so you just can play this coronavirus is not an excuse for racism nothing is discrimination can be disguised as jokes or political opinion don't let that happen be open and listen to people who have experienced racism. This can build understanding and support. It's vital to speak out when it feels safe. Call it out. Mind your language. Words can obscure people's humanity and feel stereotypes. Say what you're for. We're for a world where we can live freely and without fear. It's up to us to make that happen. So as you can see, we filmed it at a place that was not very quiet and was very echoey. Um, but as you can see, sort of just sort of thinking about the framing and you know the lighting and all of that, these are just some examples for you to sort of look at. Um, so then when it comes to editing, uh, it's really important that you subtitle everything. Um, so because, you know, just for accessibility reasons, and sometimes people actually don't have the sound on. So just having the text on screen helps them to understand. Um, and TikTok has uh, an order caption feature where, you know, you can put in the track and then it will generate sort of like captions. And then you can edit those captions if you don't want to type them in. Um, but, you know, being able to type them in is also an opportunity for you to sort of play around with um, different elements to, you know, uh, like color and size and style and duration to sort of bring emphasis and impact to your videos. Um, and then you just want to make sure that when you're editing, um, that subtitles don't take up too much room or cover any faces because, you know, as we spoke about, people's faces are really important and we want to be able to see them. So here's just an example of how you can sort of edit a video and put it together um, using sort of the different colors and, you know, styles and stuff for emphasis on the left here. Court in China has rejected this woman's historic Me Too case against a famous TV presenter. Zhe Xiaoxuan, a 28-year-old screenwriter, said she was sexually harassed by a famous presenter when she was an intern. So, known as Xianzi in China, said in 2018 that Zhu Jun, a 57-year-old anchor and state broadcaster CCTV, groped and forcibly kissed her in a dressing room when she was 21. Her post went viral and she quickly became a symbol of hope for young women in China. Zhu denied the allegations and sued her for defamation. She then countersued him, demanding a public apology and financial compensation. On the court in Beijing rejected Zhou's case, saying she had provided insufficient evidence. Zhou said the judges didn't give her much of an opportunity to detail her allegations and that she will appeal. Um, yeah, and then you just want to make sure that, you know, when you're subtitling or adding text to your video, 
it's really important to remember that your video is going to show with a bunch of stuff around it. So as you can see on the right here, we've got like, you know, the like button, the profile button, the comment button, we've got the music, we've even got a caption on the bottom. So, and then it also crops differently for different phone ratios. So it's really, it's really important that you think about, you know, the placement of the text and don't put things too close to the side or else it's going to get covered or too close to the bottom, which will be then hidden underneath the caption. Um, so you always want to be thinking about how the audience is going to be seeing your video and, you know, um, how it will be presented to them so that you can make sure that they, it's as clear as possible. And then once you've edited your video, you can then post on TikTok. Um, so this is the posting screen. Uh, you will then write a caption. It is 150 characters maximum, including hashtags. So you want to write something that's really strong, engaging, but also really concise. Um, and then uh, you want to set a thumbnail. So on TikTok, you, you can click on it and then you can uh, choose a frame and it sort of moves sort of like a GIF style um, to, for you to set as a thumbnail that then appears on your profile. Um, so this is really important that you make sure that you set a thumbnail that is really clear because if someone were to come to your profile, um, this is the first thing that, they, this is the, the shot that they're going to see. Um, and then they should be able to look at the shot and be like, oh, this, is, this seems interesting. I want to click on it. Instead of something that's like, you know, eyes closed, not really sure what's going on. On, um, you want to be able to set a screen that people are like, oh, this seems cool. I want to, you know, watch this video. I know what this video is about. And if you don't have a shot that can do that, um, at the bottom, there's, um, you know, uh, text boxes that you can use to then sort of complement that and to add additional context about uh, for what the video is about. So that if people come to your profile, they can read it and they'll say, oh, okay, I know what this video is about and I want to watch this or I don't want to watch this. Um, and if you don't feel ready to post, uh, well, you can publish if you want, um, but if you don't feel ready to post, you can save it as a draft. Um, and the drafts are going to be on your profile page and then you can come back and edit it and um, do all of those things. However, I've had a lot of sort of issues with TikTok um, and saving as a draft. So sometimes you may lose your work. So in general, I do encourage you to post it, uh, you know, edit it and then post it all in one go. Um, but it could just be, you know, a bug on my phone or something like that. Although I do know a lot of people who have this issue. So just make sure that you try to save regularly as much as possible um, and then just sort of save and, and then post um, pretty much as soon as you can be, instead of saving it and then you may lose your work later. Um, yeah. And then you, uh, just a quick sort of note about hashtags checking the time. So uh, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you match the topic. Um, as we spoke about, hashtags are key to sort of TikTok recognizing and realizing what your video is about and then making sure that it reaches the right audience who is interested in this. Um, as we spoke about, the For You page is personalized to each user's interests and preferences. So use hashtags that to tell the algorithm what interests your video addresses. Um, the more information that TikTok has, the more likely it will be served to the right people. And so this is pretty simple. You can just do some hashtag research. So for example, you have a video about a really cute dog crushing a cricket match. So you can take a look, um, you just search dog on TikTok and then go to hashtags and then here is a list of all of the top hashtags. Um, and so you can click into each of them and take a look at some of the top videos and think, okay, is this something, is this similar to the type of video that I am posting? Um, is this something that people who are interested in this video may search? So you wanna think about what are the hashtags that somebody would search if they were trying to find my video? Um, and then we have the For You page hashtag. Um, so FYP, which is short for For You page, and then hashtag For You page are two of the most popular hashtags. So you'll see a lot of people on TikTok, almost or like all of the videos on TikTok have the uh, have some version of For You page as a hashtag. Um, however, and it's fine for you to include, but you shouldn't only use these hashtags because if you go to the For You page hashtag FYP on um, TikTok, as you'll see, there's billions of views and the types of content are completely varied and so you'll be sort of competing against a lot of different sort of types of content it'll be really hard for you to rank at the top of FYP um, so you want to try and basically mix and match some popular and less popular hashtags just to maximize the opportunity to reach you know a broad and also a targeted audience at the same time so you want might want to mix in like dog you might want to mix in for you page you might want to do like cricket um and then you might want to work in some learning hashtags like learn on TikTok and EduTalk are really big, um, especially for news. Um, so as TikTok is continuing to sort of push learning and knowledge and information, um, there's a lot of these sort of learning style TikToks, uh, sorry, hashtags that uh, people are sort of, uh, that are growing in popularity that you can also include if you're sort of doing news reporting in general. 
So just some final words about making the algorithm work for you. Um, so make sure that you switch the TikTok Pro account just because it will offer you these analytics that you would not be able to see. And they're very, very, very uh, detailed. And actually TikTok has a great computer interface as well so that you can um, actually look at the, you can see this in even more detail on your laptop or your computer. Um, and then this will help you to be able to make decisions. So you can say, oh, wow, this video did really well. and. Um, let me try and do this again, or maybe it didn't do as well, or, oh, wow, I reached a lot of people in Poland. Maybe I should make some more content about Poland. Um, so these are all sort of very key information that will help you to, you know, make an experiment with different types of videos and see what works and, you know, you can see what your audience likes. Um, it's important to find your community and, you know, your target audience so that you're creating content, especially for them in a way that will help to sort of reach them. Um, you want to maximize the first moments, as we spoke about, just to really grab people's attention, write strong, engaging, but concise captions. Um, this also helps TikTok to understand what your video is about. Um, you want to try and post at the right time. A lot of times posting times are not a big deal. Um, however, TikTok does show you when your people, when you know most of your audience is online. And then if um, a lot of them are online at that time and they do you know, see your video and they do interact with it, um, then it's very likely to get an initial boost, which will then just sort of send signals to the algorithm. Um, however, you know, it doesn't necessarily, it, if you post at the right time and it's not a great video, that still doesn't really mean anything. So it's more that, you know, you focus on creating high quality content that people will want to engage with and people will want to watch. Um, you want to engage with other TikTok users, including your audience, um, using the right hashtags, mixing sort of, you know, popular ones with less popular ones. Um, thinking about, you know, using trending sounds and music and then making sure that your content is accessible. So, you know, you've got subtitles, you've got, you know, captions and so on so that, you know, you can basically make it as accessible to as many people as possible. This way you'll be able to reach as many people as possible. And then just another quick reminder is that you don't have to have a big following to do well on TikTok. It doesn't base recommendations based on your follower count or previous success with a high performing video. So if you create content that just resonates with your audience or enough people, then you have just as much chance of ending up on the For You page as some of the biggest players in the platform. And any post by any account can go viral any day. And I, this is how I got started on TikTok. I accidentally went viral because I made this video for Water Aid, the water video where I'm put in the shower. Um, uh, and then uh, it, I was going to hide it on my, I was editing on my private account and then I was going to download it and send it to WaterAid. And then I forgot to hide it after I, I finished the video. And then I woke up the next day and there were so many notifications. And then my video ended up doing 200,000 views. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I guess people kind of like this. Maybe I should, you know, do some follow-up content and see what happens. And then it did really well again. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm, I'm doing TikTok now. Um, so that's just to say that, you know, I started with like no followers and somehow got 200K views on my first video. So, um, you know, anybody can go viral. So yeah, post away and don't be afraid to experiment with different styles because this is a really exciting new space and people are doing all sorts of different things with it. And you can look at the data and you can see how people are actively engaging with your content. And then you can, you know, come up with new theories and do different types of content um, and, you know, just create good content and, you know, you'll be able to hit the for you page and go viral. And that is it. Time for questions. Wow, uh, Cassie, okay. <laughs> I think you did that all in one breath. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible, absolutely amazing. Uh, so much, uh, well, as, as we experienced the last time, you cover so much ground. And I've just been having a bit of a joke with some of our uh, friends here today on, on the chat, just about how they'll, they'll ask a question. And then before you know it, you've, you've gone ahead and answered the question. Um, um, with something you've said a little bit afterwards, but we do have lots of questions still outstanding. So I'm going to try and go through those now and lot, lot, lots of lovely feedback in the chat there. Lots of love for you there, Cassie. So, um, so well done. Um, okay, let's dive in. So right at the very beginning, you talked about how TikTok is, uh, it's all about the content rather than the social. It's a co content graph rather than a social graph. And Jenny's asking, well, how, how how specifically can we take advantage of that? I mean, what's what's the way that we make sure we are making the, I guess, the most of TikToks, you know, leaning into that content rather than social? 
uh, what do you mean? Sorry, what do you mean, like content and social? Well, you, you talked you talked about you know it, the, the the way that it recommends you know it, it, what it bring the content it brings to the fore, you know that it's not really about you know co content coming from from people we follow or like you know whatever you know so how how can we just make the most of that? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of sort of just starting and then just trying stuff because like, I think like it's 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 such an exciting thing because it's like you can have zero followers and then like immediately go viral. So you don't necessarily need to be sort of held back by that. And then just sort of, um, I would say that like, you know, thinking of just thinking content first and being like thinking about your audience and being like focusing on creating good videos that make sense to the platform. Um, kind of as we've sort of been speaking about just making sure that, you know, you know, okay, this makes sense. And this is something that my audience would be interested in and then making sure that you spend the time um, to create these videos so a lot of the videos that you've seen actually do take a lot of time even though they look like you know they're very like oh you know I just picked up my phone and started talking which some people are really good at but like, you know sometimes you do have to sort of spend time thinking about these things it's like okay I need to make sure that I find good music I need to find, find the right hashtags I need to make sure that you know I have good graphics that are bright um, so just making sure that you have you know all of these elements in place and just sort of making sure you're creating good content in general yeah i mean jenny's just posted again there in the chat because she's saying to follow up on that question i was thinking about you know how to match interest to take advantage of the way the algorithm serves content rather than looking at friend connections so um oh, okay yeah so it's really about you know yeah I mean, you've covered a lot of that just about you know choosing good subjects and trending topics yeah. and so on you know that's i guess um what what, you, what what we would say to that um okay let, let me just uh go back into my list of questions here uh, mojo is saying uh, i've experimented with news on tiktok over the past couple of months and i found the app really unpredictable um the number of views my views seem to differ hugely and i'd love to know if cassie has found the same and if she has any advice and mojo is saying you know it's, it's the same kind of content in these news items and yet the views you know differ um you know quite quite uh, by a large margin what, what what what's what's the, what's the reasoning for that do you think yeah, I, I've also found that I, and you can actually see that on a lot of even like really popular TikTok that uh, they all have like one video with like 5 million views and then one video with like 1,000 views. Um, so this is something that I think a lot of people just face in general. And so sometimes, you know, it might be, you sort of have to like test it out. So sometimes, for example, I'll find, oh, maybe a certain topic that I cover just doesn't do as well for some reason, even though I feel like it's very similar to another topic. And then basically I'll try and like tweak a, 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 maybe a certain thing and I'll say, okay, maybe uh, if I'm covering a story about, uh, okay, uh, Chile legalizing same-sex marriage actually didn't do that well compared to other videos, um, but then let me cover another, and then some another country legalizes same-sex marriage. Then I might say, okay, let me try and do that again. And then see if like, you know, uh, Switzerland legalizing same-sex marriage has the same sort of result if I sort of frame it the same way, um, but is it sort of like a country thing? Um, so basically you sort of have to do a lot of like testing to figure out which factor it is that may be affecting you. So it might be like, oh, maybe um, Chile didn't do as well because it's not in Spanish because, you know, maybe there's a large population of TikTok users from South, South America who or Latin America who speak in, in, in um, who watch videos in Spanish. And so this is not something that they're interested in because it's English. And so there's a lot of these factors and basically you just sort of have to come up with your own list and try to like replicate them um, and, and try to like test each one of them every time sort of a new story comes up. Um, there's no real sort of answer. I think it's just sort of like you have to try, keep trying until trying and changing different things until you sort of figure out what it is that sort of gets your video to end up on the For You page and getting TikTok to be like, oh, okay, um, I understand what this video is about and these are the people who are interested in it. So it's sort of a trial and error sort of thing, but I can, I definitely feel that frustration. Sometimes I spend a lot of time on a video and it only gets like, I don't know, 500 views and I'll be like, what, what, what happened? There's a video with half a million views and then I have 500 views on this video. Yeah, I guess it's like going fishing. Sometimes you 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 catch nothing, and sometimes you yeah you just bring in a, a, a huge netful. Um, related to that, Fem uh, is saying I find working with a business account not a plus for my own business. My videos, uh, when Fem was using a, a business account, just did not get sent to the for you page. 
when I switched back to a personal account, I finally saw growth and engagement again. Is that all about the authenticity or I mean, is there anything at play there other than? Um, I'm not really sure about sort of like the account settings, but I would say that in general, like, I don't know if it does affect like whether your stuff is shown to um, people or not, but I do think that in general, TikTok really favors sort of like personality, um, sort of like having an individual the same way that you know, like, uh, you know, like, even though I run almost the, the almost account doesn't have many followers on TikTok, um, whereas we post the same sort of content, it tends to always go viral on my account. And it's like, people are sort of interested in seeing like a person. So it's more maybe that you need to think about a way to sort of present the brand or having like a face behind the brand or faces behind the brand, because I think people on TikTok tend to engage more with like a person versus like a brand. And I think this sort of tends to run true around uh, a lot of the social media platforms so it might be that you know it just feels more personal to have like a person's name or something like that versus like oh x company posting a tiktok and then someone might be like oh this sounds like this feels like marketing it feels like an ad i don't really want to engage with this but you know seeing her like we spoke about you know seeing a real person they'll be like oh okay it's a real person working at this company um yeah cool like you know i can engage and connect with this person okay great um couple of uh, sort of practical questions. Shane is asking, um, is it worthwhile getting a special lapel mic or anything like that? Or, or you know, are AirPods and earphones really just as good? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on sort of, you know, how hard you want to go on TikTok. Um, I think a lot of creators, even though like really professional ones, some of them just have like the, the wired mics and then they just hold their microphone here. Um, but if you have like, the money or you have the resources or you want to invest in this or you just happen to have one then you can definitely use it a lot of people use airpods a lot of people use uh the mics the wide mics because actually they have a better microphone um and then a lot of people have this but also a lot of people go like this and it's also a look so i think it doesn't really matter as long as like the quality is like relatively good and people can hear you um it's fine and it's not too echoey because but sometimes, you know, when you're doing like really authentic, like in the moment stuff, people don't really mind if it's like, you know, I caught this wild thing happening live, then like people don't really mind because it's like, oh, this is like a moment where you couldn't have been ready to have your mic out yes. kind of thing. Um, and I think it's, it's just sort of making sure that you do as much as you can to make sure that the sound sounds all right and people can hear you. Uh, and Shane's also wanting a recommendation for a good selfie stick. Any, any particular type you would recommend or you find useful? Mm -hmm. Um, no, I think I just bought like the cheapest one and it was fine. <laughs> um, I think most of them are really good. Uh, you just, it, it's more just the fact that, you know, it is less tiring on your hands and it extends so you can sort of hold it up. Um, I think you can just try a couple. I mean, like they, a lot of them are really, really cheap. So you don't necessarily need to invest in like a super high quality one, especially if you're just starting out. I think it's like, you know, just sort of experiment. You can just sort of, you don't necessarily need all of these things. Like when I first started, I was just holding my phone. Like I just stand in front of like the window and then like hold my phone like this and then talk into my phone. And a lot of people just do that. And then it's only when I sort of was getting really like, okay, I'm going to invest in this, that I bought a ring light. Um, and then that was, that's about it. And I haven't bought a selfie stick because I haven't really been running around on the ground. But if I were to go on the ground, I might just get like, you know, a cheap one off Amazon or something mm -hmm. like that. A couple of questions about subtitles and captions. Um, now, Sarah, Sarah used to work for the BBC and Sarah's asking for me, graphics and or captions over somebody's mouth or eyes in a video has always been a no-no. Does she need to update her opinion on that, do you think? No, I mean, I think that's still a no-no. I don't think we should cover, as we spoke about, like people need to be able to see people's eyes to, and like face to be able to like try and engage with them. And that's why I'm sort of recommending sort of making sure that you have room around this per the person to be able to have like space for like text so that it doesn't cover their face because it, it looks really bad yeah. if someone has like text over their forehead and stuff like that. Um, so it's just sort of trying to figure out a way around that. And so when you're editing and you're filming, you want to keep in mind that there's going to be all of these things like on this side and on this side. And then, you know, you want to be like, okay, where am I going to potentially put the text? So just making sure you leave room for that because covering eyes and stuff is, is not good in general, unless you really can't do anything about it. It's too zoomed in. Then you just got to try your best. Uh, and Paul's asking, um, it, does TikTok offer any kind of built-in translation captioning? 
Um, no, I don't think so at the moment. The feature that I know exists is in English. And so basically you put in a video that's in English and then you can turn on the auto captioning feature. So it'll process your video and then it'll pump out like what it thinks you said and then you can like edit it and then um, make sure that it's all correct. And then it'll show up as like, kind of like uh, closed captions on the bottom. Um, but it doesn't work for other languages at the moment. Not that I'm aware of. And actually, Megan has just posted there. She, she's saying, I find that if captions are hidden under the like buttons and so on, it's much more annoying than not being able to see a person's face. So I guess there's an awful lot to <laughs> kind of avoid, isn't it? Yeah, there? you have to fit a lot to in. There's a lot of stuff going on. So you always have to be like, how can I best position myself and all of this stuff with enough room for the text? Yeah. A couple of questions from Julia. Julia saying, um, have I got this right? Unlike standard video, for TikTok, you hold, you always hold the phone upright. Mm, never, well, it depends. Would, would there, mm. Mm, I guess it depends because like if you're filming in TikTok or Instagram for TikTok, then you want to hold it upright because that's how it's going to be filmed inside the app and then you're going to edit it directly in the app. But if you're using like footage that you film from elsewhere, like for example, if you're out covering something on the ground, um, usually I actually recommend filming if you're like, filming footage for other stuff in general. I recommend filming horizontally because it gives you more room and you can crop to vertical. It just does mean that, you know, after, if you film it and then you want to up, you can upload stuff to TikTok. So you can, you know, you can film it and then you can cut it into like a vertical, however you want, and then, you know, leave some space and then you can upload it to TikTok. Um, so it just gives you more room to play with if you're filming. But if you're like just doing like selfie cell stuff, um, then you can definitely just like hold a vertical. And especially if you're filming within TikTok, do not film like this because all the filters go this way as well. Yeah, sure. And I think I remember this question the last time, but Julie's also asking me, how long does it take you to make some of these pieces? I mean, what, what would the what would the range be? Um, so when I first started, it would take a really long time because I was really unfamiliar with the interface um, and also like editing on my phone because I used to editing on my computer, which is like a whole different experience when you first start editing on your phone. Um, it can feel quite fiddly because you're sort of having to do like you have a very small screen to sort of work with. Um, but I think as phones have gotten bigger, it's OK. And some people edit it on the iPad. They, they, they've told me they, they enjoy this experience a lot more because the screen's a little bigger. Um, so editing takes uh, took me a while. Um, so I previously spent a few hours doing that each time, um, but now I can do it pretty quickly. Um, but that's just after like having made like hundreds of videos that I can do it pretty quickly in like an hour or two. Um, and then there's also obviously also like the filming and stuff. So there's a whole process, you know, but I write the script, then I got to find all of the background assets. So I have to think, okay, for this line, what do I want for the background? Then I have to like, make sure that it's vertical. Um, then I have to like, you know, put it on my phone. And then I have to like set up my ring light, which takes no time, put on makeup, um, and then memorize my lines and say them and record them. And so sometimes, and, and then it also takes, it also is like, you know, sometimes you have to memorize your lines and that takes a while. And then I put all the videos together and then I edit it on TikTok and then and I post so and then I have to do research for hashtags so it can take anywhere between like I don't know uh an hour and a half for like a short video now that I have more experience to like you know like I don't know a day um depending or like eight hours six six to eight hours for something that requires also reporting so I think it's, it's really depending on the story and sort of the level of your experience but like the more you do it I think the quicker you get in general and do you prefer um Liz is asking here and Paul too, do you prefer to edit in the app, in the TikTok app, or do you prefer um, doing it on editing on desktop and then uploading? Um, so I edit, uh, so what I do is I film on Instagram and then I save the clips and then I combine them together on my computer. And then um, using like Premiere or anything, any video editor, I combine them into one giant thing and one like long, the entire video together. And then I upload it to TikTok and I add all the text and music and stuff within TikTok. Um, I prefer to do that because it looks more natural and it looks more like the type of content that you would see on TikTok versus like me captioning it on the computer, which also works. But I think people tend, from sort of what I've observed, people tend to engage when it looks like it's been made in the app. Um, and I think TikTok likes it too when you make stuff in the app and it's more likely to um, versus like you just uploading something that you've already made because I think TikTok also wants you to be able to you know spend time on this app. Okay, no, thank you, thank you for that. Um, 
how many hashtags is too many? Paul and Gail are asking. Uh, there's there's a limit, I think, in Instagram for thirty hashtags. Is that right? Um, mm -hmm. Or is it a case of more is more with with TikTok? Um, I think there's well, obviously there's a hundred and fifty character limit. So if you don't want to write a caption, then you can have one hundred and fifty characters to <laughs> include hashtags. And I think the the minimum is like you need to have three characters in a hashtag. So you could probably do the math and figure out what the maximum is. Um, but I think it's more there's no sort of like maximum. Um, I think it's more just like making sure that you've got the right ones there, where you've got a good mix. So it's not just like. You know, like if, for example, we're, uh, you know, covering Tonga's volcano explosion, we might do like Tonga, hashtag Tonga, hashtag volcano, hashtag for you page, uh, maybe like hashtag environment. And then I will obviously like, then you can do some research and then maybe you want to find some like very specific ones. Maybe there's a specific hashtag for the name of the volcano explosion that everybody is using or something like that. So just making sure that you have um, a wide range of them. So you might have to tweak your caption text a little bit to make sure that you've got all the ones that you want in there. And Ella's asking, you know, can a caption be too long or should you endeavor to, to use up, you know, that all of that real, that 150 character real estate? Um, I think it, it doesn't, I think people don't necessarily engage with the hashtag. So you can try to, you know, if you have those, if you can think of all of these hashtags to include, then definitely just do it because it doesn't hurt. And people are not going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you did like 15 hashtags or something like that. Um, it's more just like, if you, if you, yeah, I mean, people don't really care. So um, if you have like a short, uh, short, short caption and then like 30 hashtags, a lot of it is hidden anyway. It just says see more. And then people probably won't click on it unless they want to see which hashtags you used. And most of the time, people who use the app just sort of read the caption, read the first two lines, and then they don't click see more unless it's a long caption, but then they read the comments instead. Great, thank you. A um, couple of copyright questions. Cassie, um, so about music and also about some of those news clips. Um, what, what do we need to be just mindful of in terms of, um, well, I think particularly Catherine's just asking, you know, if particularly if you are bringing something from another platform, maybe a, um, where you've, you've maybe used music or a clip from somewhere mm -hmm. else and then you're bringing that into TikTok or vice versa, do we need to be aware of just some copyright issues around, around that? Yeah, so um, on TikTok, in terms of music, I'll address that first. So TikTok has like a corporate library, basically kind of like stock music that is like royalty free music. Um, so there's like a bunch of them on there. So you can actually, if you, I think if you are like a business account or something, or you have to like get it approved, but basically there is a library of music that you can use royalty free, not just on TikTok, but like across other platforms. Um, so if you do make a TikTok video, just make sure that you choose a song that you're not probably going to run into copyright issues um, instead of like, you know, the latest Ariana Grande song or something like that. Um, and then in terms of using video from elsewhere, like if I'm talking about news story. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you see in like my videos, I have a getting subscription. So I pay for those, those uh, photos and videos. And so I can then use them. Um, but I think like the rules generally of like sort of UGC apply here where, you know, if you, if it's from like a celebrity or like, you know, if it's from like a politician, then most likely you can use it. Um, you know, most of the time it's better to reach out for permission. Um, so one of the ways that I've seen a lot of people sort of work around it is like, if you can't, if you don't have photos of like a news event, um, a lot of people do like a screenshot of like a, a, a news story um, in the background instead. And so it's sort of like the same concept of like um, you, instead of like screen, uh, taking somebody's photo from their tweet you just embed the entire tweet so it's sort of that's kind of uh it's still kind of like a gray area but i would say like if possible always try to reach out if it's like from an individual or you don't have the rights to the photo or the video um and then if not if there's no way around it you can probably do you can probably get away with like a screenshot of like the entire article without just focusing on the um you know the just a screenshot of the actual photo um, and yeah, music just, there is, you can find um, royalty free music on there and you can also use royalty free music on tic, like from other platforms on TikTok, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, Andrew's asking, are there any particular subjects which cause, I think we've touched on that, but you know, cause problems on TikTok in particular? I mean, are there any sort of taboo topics that will just, just mean that your, 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 your video doesn't get, um, get shown? 
Um, I think a lot of it is related to just sort of thinking for like young people, like the same way that Instagram has rules for like sort of making sure that content is quite like uh, young people friendly. So just like staying away from like violence um, and like graphic content and those sorts of things that, you know, people don't necessarily want to see. Um, I think just sort of applying those rules and thinking like, you know, for uh, a younger audience. Um, so you definitely want, don't want to be putting like violence on there just in general or like r-rated content but i mean there's no, no no political topics that would be censored mm, no i don't think so but i i think it's really sort of like sometimes the algorithm thinks that you're promoting like like for example when we did the video explaining what was going on in Afghanistan. We um, got flagged for promoting a terrorist organization. We were just explaining what the Taliban was and their history. Um, so I think it's sort of, you, it's it's difficult because sometimes it thinks that you're promoting something else when you're not, when you're just trying to report on the news. It doesn't happen much, but you, it's just sort of making sure that you, you do as much as you can to make sure that you're not, you can, you can be seen as doing that, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then just, uh, I'm conscious of our time, just a couple of questions to finish, um, Cassie. Um, Paul's asking, I'd be really interested to know if there's any data on whether TikTok users will jump platforms when they see content, which they might be interested in. You know, so if they want to do a, a deeper dive into something, I mean, is it, you know, is there any evidence that, you know, you, you that they'll then go on to look at something else that you, you've referenced or, I mean, is it, is it a good platform for that? Or do you, do you kind of need to assume that actually people will begin and end their their journey on that topic in, in TikTok? Um, yeah, I'm not sure actually, because we have seen like some people who started following us on TikTok and then they ended up following us on Instagram. Um, just, I guess they were on our page and then they found us on Instagram later. Uh, so I think there is like the opportunity for sort of doing that. I think it's sort of just speaking not just about TikTok but just sort of like Instagram and all of these platforms in general it's just sort of about building like a loyal uh fan base who like really like your work and really like you know want to engage with your work and on multiple platforms so it's like it's focusing on sort of making sure that you know you're creating good content that they like and then they know that they can rely on you and so when you're pointing them in another direction and you say hey um come to our website and read about the deep dive investigation we have about this video that we made then they'll say yeah i've watched like a hundred of your videos and i know love the work that you do and so yeah i'm going to go to your website on another app and then i'm going to go and read this this long form investigation because i'm really interested i don't think there's any data to really show that at the moment um but i think this is just sort of how to think about this where it's like sort of building loyalty for to serve these long-term goals yeah, but I guess but in comparison, I think what Andrew's saying here is, you know, with Facebook and Twitter, it's very easy to push people to to a, to a web link. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, I think it's, hmm. it's very easy to sort of just go down a TikTok hole and just keep scrolling and looking at more TikToks. So I think, yeah, maybe a lot of it is sort of people staying on the platform. But I mean, I think there's a lot that you can sort of do to continue to engage with them on the platform. And, um, and just finally from Paul, um, would you say TikTok is a good place to build brand awareness, you know, putting your logo in in the videos or, or I guess we're coming back to that starting point of authenticity and personal. I mean, you know, how much how much of your your, you know, the news organizations you you, you represent are you bringing into your videos, Cassie, and, and, and how much do you leave out? Um, I think that it really, I think it's a, it's a good platform to just be on at the, at the moment in general, because there's so many people on it and there's a lot of opportunities for growth. And I think that like, if you're, you know, it's very easy to see if there's a very clear correlation to like, you know, when you have a good a viral video, then you're able to, um, then it sort of, uh, you, then it goes, then you, you gain a lot of the followers uh, versus stuff that is like, oh, you may have a viral video on Twitter, but you gain no followers kind of thing. So I think it's just a good place to be in general, but like, in terms of brand building, I do think that, you know, you can do it in a way that sort of 
feels, it's about striking the balance, right? Where it's like, you know, you can have your logo on there. I don't think people are going to be like, oh, that's weird or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you might not say, for example, you're doing like, I don't know, maybe you work for a TV station. You might not want to like um, put like a horizontal broadcast on there because it feels weird. Maybe you want to do something a little bit more tiktok -y. Maybe you want to green screen yourself in front of this thing or maybe you want to green screen you over like um, an article that you wrote so that it just feels more authentic. I think there are ways that you can sort of do it where it doesn't feel very like blatantly like I'm trying to push my brand on you but more just like here I work for this organization I'm going to talk about you know this article that I wrote for this organization here's the screenshot here's me talking about it um, and then you know people won't mind if you have like a thing at the end that's like you know follow BBC for more or, or like follow almost for more um, or you know maybe you want to just say it instead so I think it's just sort of figuring out how you can do it in a way that doesn't feel like it's like an ad. You basically just don't want to make people feel like you're marketing something to them. Yeah.